St. John Cantius was a 15th century professor at the University of Krakow. He's known for his love for the poor, his love for the broken. Of course, the most famous story, the story of the miracle of the jug. The miracle of the jug. The miracle of the jug. It's called the miracle of, of the broken jug, and that's become like an icon of our, our charism to restore the sacred. In my mind, my favorite image of him is the intellectual academic be teaching in the classroom, and then the next moment, walking across the square. A girl is going through the marketplace to sell a jug of milk that she has, and that is the income that she needs for her household. She drops the jug, breaks the jug, and all the milk is spilled, and St. John Cantius notices this. As the legend says, he began to pick up the pieces of the jug and put them together, and miraculously, the jug was made whole again. And so he tells the girl, fill it with water and go back home. He blesses her, blesses the jug of water. She returns home and finds that that water had turned back into that rich, sweet milk. This has become an analogy for us at St. John Cantius. Restoring sacred tradition through primarily the liturgy and what people see, tangible signs and things that are beautiful, are just a means to restoring the individual. A certain kind of marriage between who he was as a priest and what we're trying to do as a religious community, restore the sacred, um, restoring the soul through the sacraments, through the hands of the priests, as, as the miracle of the jug took place through the hands of St. John Cantius. And they start to experience that inner restoration and that inner peace that they wouldn't otherwise experience. Everything's broken. The question then is, so then what can you do about it? If everything's broken, who cares? Like, it's then nothing has meaning unless there's a way to put what is broken back together. What a difference it makes to think that, you know, I'm just a piece of garbage, I'm a broken jug, I can't do anything good, to being transformed by God's love and healing and mercy to say, I'm a child of God. But when we talk about the sacred in the sense of restoration of the sacred for our order, that word sacred has a special meaning. It is something that's set aside it's set apart specifically for God. It is God himself who is first set apart, and then his church is set apart. Then those who seek Christ there are themselves set apart, and it impacts the day-to-day -day lives of every person who comes in contact with the sacred. You see that you are set apart, that you're called to something higher, and so what begins in the church goes out to the whole world. I don't even know if we knew what this would, would become, but it was men who gathered here who want to be part of this renaissance or whatever was happening here. There was something new. Well, it began when Father Frank Phillips, a resurrectionist father, was assigned to St. John Cantius Parish in 1988. When we first came over here, this place was, was kind of empty, you know, and uh, needed a lot of work. It was a parish that was almost dead. Father Frank Phillips, he said that there were 70 parishioners left. In this enormous church that at one time had 22,000 people. There were 70 people attended Sunday Mass. If you counted the statues. Including the statues. But he came in and he saw the sacredness of the space. He saw the beauty of it. And he began to have other ideas. Maybe the Holy Spirit is asking me to bring these men together to continue the work that I'm doing. God slowly reveals these things to Father Phillips and it was more and more revealed to us, like, this is what we're called to do. And it's like, yeah, yeah. And it's like, it resonates here. It resonates here. There were various men in the Paris that began to feel a call to a vocation. Um, I was one of them. So I was at St. John Cantius before the community started. And I think the Cardinal with Father Phillips saw that there was something happening there, especially when he saw all the young men interested in it. It was a little bewildering, maybe at the time, because we had to figure it out uh, as we were going along. I remember reading the early documents when the, these first men were having meetings and writing things down. And one of them said, we have no plans, we're just listening. And I think that's really what was happening. They had no plans, no real vision. They were just listening to what was happening and trying to respond and say yes. He himself having a great love for uh, the liturgy and music and beauty began to restore some of these things and slowly but surely people started showing up 
And so the persons came up and saved St. John Cantius. So it started with the material structure of the church, and eventually he was able to draw more people. So many people coming, so many young men who were just interested in, in this idea of celebrating the Mass you know, very reverently and you know, restoring a certain sense of the beauty of the church, that that kind of evolved into um, this community. And that's how it happened. It has been such a gift to see this community grow beyond St. John Cantus Parish. We exist in Volo and in Springfield, and those are just the beginnings. And we can see that the fruit of that is spreading. Why us? Why is this community growing? Why is this parish growing when a lot of other parishes today, sadly, are on the decline or have had to close? I would like to think that it's, it's due to our presence being there. It's just been a steady sense of organic growth that guys have come, they've joined, they've left the community, but the parish has grown significantly. It went from 70 people on a Sunday when Father Frank first got there to over 3,000 families now. It's a testament to us, and it's a testament to the people that see us. I don't know, I can, I can go on and on about what made us grow, it is what the reasons were, it is. You really need to ask the young people that. The ones that came after us, after us first ones, you know, what brought them here? Being in this community, living with a group of guys, it's not easy, but it's, it is, it's like being in a family, and I think that's where my heart is. I always wanted to be a part of a big family. These are my brothers. Majority of them are Americans, there are two Canadians. I am uh, the only one from Europe so far. What I appreciate in particular is that there's like a family lifestyle. You know, I'm a, so blessed to be part of this community and I feel at home here and, you know, living together, praying together, meals together, working together, that common life we live, it's, it's part of who we are to restore the sacred in our, the way we live. If I had chosen to do my own thing, it would have borne such little fruit compared to what I've been able to be part of as a larger community at Canada's regular. That is a great testament to this community that we've not only grown, that we've been able to accomplish so many different things, but that we've been able to do it with a sense of true, true brotherhood. Of course, we are who we are, it is, but we say our life is not ours anymore, and so you have to have that unconditional love. And how can you say that you love God if you don't love your brother? Next 25s? <laughs> okay, good question. Well, the longer I'm here, the less I am able to predict what's going to happen. When I look back at the 25 years, I can see that all of the difficulties and trials that we've had are all part of God's plan, and that we wouldn't be encountering these difficulties if God didn't have a plan for our community. I don't know if any of us 25 years ago realized that we would get this far, if it would last but we always somehow managed to come through them and uh, continue to grow. So I think that in the future, this community is gonna be very important, not just in the city of Chicago or wherever else we are, but I think it's gonna be important in the life of the church worldwide. And it's very exciting to be part of something. I don't know what the next 25 years will hold. I don't know if we'll be here tomorrow. So let's be faithful with what we have today. And God will provide the growth. We just seek to follow our Lord where he leads us. Just really feel, you know, privileged to be a part of this brotherhood and, and to serve with them. A beautiful thing just to see like a like a, a resurgence of, of of the Catholic faith. I would assume we'll have probably another house or two at least in expanding our charism elsewhere so that it can be experienced in other places. I think the journey counts itself, you know. Uh, I have no idea what's going to be in 25 years. My dream is that we will open a house in my country, in Poland, one day. Oh, it would be great to have it grow. You know, grow in holiness, grow in membership. If God wants and asks of us to take another parish, diocese, or other places, yeah, definitely. We're not there yet. We still have a need for a certain number of men before we can take on other parishes in different dioceses or in different countries even. So growth is probably the most important thing over the next 25 years. The life is very full and it's full of surprises. And I have no idea what the next 25 years holds, but I think it's gonna be a great adventure. Can't quite put it in words for you, but I'm excited for the future. We've got good men coming in 
and uh, God has been very good to us. So I'm very pleased with the, with the, with the group of men that are in here right now. They have a sense of, uh, of knowing what's important and not important, how it impacts not only their life, but the life of all the people they serve. And so God bless Father Frank. It's because of him we are here. That's the, the story of our community, a broken church that was restored. And we hope that our parishes, we hope that our priests, we hope that our brothers, we hope that as a religious community, we can be those restorers of what is broken. It's at the very core of who we are. It's very evident to me that God has been in control. It's not about us, it's about Him. And if we're faithful to Him, then He will bring us success.